Windows PowerShell includes very basic built-in support for something called Active Directory Services Interface. Now notice the way I said that. I didn't say Active Directory Services Interface. I said Active Directory Services Interface because ADSI is actually a means of working with almost any type of directory, not just Active Directory. It's a means of accessing both local and domain directory accounts. Now, the built-in AD support is not fully implemented. Uh, to be honest with you, the real truth is that the PowerShell team was under a hard deadline and they put in as much ADSI functionality as they could, but it's not all the ADSI functionality that's out there. So the support's not fully implemented. Most object management tasks like creating or deleting or changing a, a, a directory object are possible, but they do require scripting. You're not really going to work with them as one-liners. Uh, the ADSI support comes from the ADSI type adapter. That's the letters ADSI in square brackets, and that allows you to access ADSI. Essentially, you take an ADSI query, prefix it with the ADSI type adapter, and PowerShell will execute that query and return whatever objects the query specifies. So WinNT provider queries are used to work with local users and groups and to work with AD using its backward compatibility with older Windows NT domains. The WinNT portion of the query is case sensitive. Also notice the use of forward slashes rather than backslashes, another easy mistake to make. The basic format is the WinNT provider name followed by a colon and two slashes. Next, you put the name of a computer or domain that you want to connect to and another slash. Finally, you put the name of the object you want, such as a username. Now optionally, you end with a comma and the type of object, such as comma user. I recommend always including the object type to help prevent errors in your script. For example, if you are retrieving a group from a local computer and for some reason there's a printer queue with the same name, you could accidentally wind up retrieving the printer queue if you don't specify the object type. ADSI has two main providers, and the first is WinNT. This works with local user and group accounts, and it also works with AD domains, giving you a flat view. It doesn't see organizational units. That can be a benefit because the WinNT provider allows you to query Active Directory domain accounts even if you don't know where the account is located within the domain without having to do searching or anything. Here's an example. Here's a very quick example of using PowerShell for local account maintenance. I start with an ADSI query. And honestly, drilling into writing these queries is a bit beyond the scope of this course, but if you're interested, pick up a copy of the book ADSI Scripting TFM if you'd like a more complete discussion as well as reference materials. Now, the ADSI query is in a string, and I'm specifically giving it the type of ADSI. We'll talk more later about these types and how they work. The results are being stored in a variable, $user. To change the user's description property, for example, I'll just access the object by using the variable $user, a dot, and then the property name. I'll set it equal to something now. The change isn't made permanent until I execute the setInfo method, which saves the change back to the directory. Now let's pipe that user object to get member so we can see it. This is where you can see that the ADSI support in PowerShell version 1 isn't really complete. That setInfo method I used isn't listed here. I, I pretty much had to know about it on my own. LDAP queries, and the LDAP portion here is case sensitive, just as it was for WinNT, are used to query any LDAP directory, including native Active Directory. You need to specify a full distinguished name for whatever object you want to retrieve, which means you need to know its location within the directory. This example retrieves the object named John Doe from the sales OU of the domain.com domain. I'm going to start by adding a couple of snap ins to the shell. The PowerShell Community Extensions and the Quest AD Management Shell. We'll use both in a little bit, and if you'd like to download them yourself, you'll find links on the DVD. Now let's do an LDAP query using ADSI. Just as in the previous example, I'm typing a string as ADSI and storing it in a variable. The difference here is that the string is an LDAP query, not a WinNT query. I'm giving the complete distinguished name or LDAP path to the directory object I want an object named Ringo in the singers OU of the company.pri domain. Piping that to get member, I can see a lot of properties, but these aren't all the attributes an AD user has. Again, you're seeing the incomplete directory support that ships with PowerShell version 1. Now, I can set the user's password by simply executing the setPassword method, which 
is again something I needed to know about since it isn't exposed by get member. Now a full discussion of ADSI is beyond the scope of this course. We're trying to cover PowerShell and we could easily spend days and days and days talking about ADSI. And there are better ways of managing directories than by using the ADSI support that's built into PowerShell. And we are going to look at some of those. However, for more information on ADSI, I recommend a book called ADSI Scripting TFM, written by Kate Facet and published by Sapien Press. Now, let's talk about those better ways of managing AD. There's a couple. There's some free AD snap-ins. Quest Software makes a set of AD management commandlets. Go to www.powergui.org or www.quest.com slash PowerShell. There are also the PowerShell community extensions. Those are at codeplex.com slash PowerShell CX. This gives you an AD PS drive provider that makes Active Directory look like a disk drive, so you can manage it just like a disk drive. Let's start with the Quest commandlets, though. These provide a set of commandlets for managing Active Directory objects, and they fit more into the PowerShell one-liner philosophy of operation. Here's how they work, and believe me, you're going to like this. I loaded the Quest commandlets into the shell earlier, so now let's see what they can do. We'll start with a simple one, get QAD user. This simply retrieves all of the users in my domain, including John, George, Ringo, and Paul. Now I'm going to quickly switch to AD users and computers and open Ringo's account. On the Organization tab, I'm going to set his company to Beatles. I'll click OK, and I'm going to do the same thing for Paul. Open the account, and on the Organization tab, set the company to Beatles. I'm going to leave George and John without an address, although I do want to open John's account to show you the Organization tab so you can see it's empty. Back to PowerShell, I'll run another command, get QAD user. This time I'm filtering the results so that I only get the users with a company of Beatles. This type of filtering done by the commandlet itself ensures I'm not getting back all of the users in the domain and then filtering them using where object, which in a large domain would consume a lot of time and resources. For all the users I get, I'm piping them to set QAD user and setting the dash L attribute, which stands for locality, although I could also have used dash city, since the commandlet accepts either one. I'm setting that to Liverpool. I get back a list of users that were changed. Now, back in AD Users and Computers, I can open Ringo's account and look at the address tab, which has been changed. If I close this and open John's account, I can see that his city is still empty, because he wasn't retrieved by GetQAD user since his company was also left blank. All right. Here is my favorite PowerShell one-liner. Let me start by first opening provision1.csv so that you can see what's in it. This is a fairly simple CSV file. Note that it does have column headers, and the remaining lines provide values for those columns. Okay, back to the shell. I'm starting by importing that CSV file using PowerShell's built-in import CSV commandlet. This reads the entire CSV file and parses it. Each line in the file becomes an object, and the columns of that CSV file become the properties of those objects. So I have a bunch of objects at this point, and I'm piping them to for each object. For each line in the CSV file, I'm executing new QAD user. I specify an organizational unit for the new users, and then I specify the attributes. For the name attribute, I'm using the current CSV line's first name column, plus a period, plus the last name column. For the SAM account name attribute, I'm using the logon name column from the CSV file, and so forth. This allows me to grab the columns from the current line of the CSV file and feed those values to new QAD user. The result? When I hit enter, the entire CSV file is imported and users are created. Back in AD users and computers, you can see that I've allowed them to be created with the default state of disabled. All right, back in the shell. I'm going to create a new global security group named Tokyo. Then I'm going to add some members to that group. The members I'm adding are whatever objects are retrieved by getQAD user, restricted to users with the locality or city of Tokyo. Back in AD users and computers, I can refresh to see my new group, open it, and see that its members are those users which had the specified city in their profile. The PS Drive provider in the PowerShell community extensions automatically makes your machine's Active Directory domain, whatever domain it's a member of, look like a disk drive. 
you can then manage and navigate the domain using commands like cd, dir, del, move, copy, ren for rename, and so forth. You treat ad as just another form of hierarchical storage. It's pretty cool. It's definitely a little bit more limited in types of management tasks you can do than the quest commandlets, but they each have their place. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Back in the shell, I'm going to run get ps drive. Notice that there's a drive named company, which is the short name of my Active Directory domain. The provider is listed as directory services. So what happens if I change into that drive by running cd company? Well, I can get a directory of the top level objects, mostly OUs and containers. If I cd into the singers OU and get a directory, I see all of the users I'd created. If I run Del George, he was never my favorite beetle, he's gone, which I can verify with another directory listing. This is another way to manage AD using PowerShell. The quest commandlets are a free add-in for working with AD objects, and the community extensions PS Drive provider is also a free add-in for working with AD objects. This chart is designed to highlight the differences between the three main ways of working with AD and PowerShell. The ADSI option is built in, and it can work with both Active Directory and local objects. And notice that this is the only option for working with local users and groups, at least as far as AD-specific technologies are concerned. You can also use WMI to work with local users and groups. So what about managing the directory infrastructure? You know, sites, services, trusts, and so forth? Well, unfortunately, there really are no current means of managing any of that infrastructure stuff. Fortunately, those aren't things you really need to do a lot usually. And so the lack of automation isn't as much of a killer. Um, you're typically doing user and group management mostly. Now, where is PowerShell going to go with AD in the future? Um, we know that version 2 of Windows PowerShell offers improved ADSI support because we've already seen community technology previews for that. Microsoft's Active Directory team will eventually produce a set of commandlets for managing Active Directory. In the meantime, rely on the Quest commandlets and the community extensions to do your real AD management.